Hi everyone, welcome to Life Tips by Ning. Today's video is about what is Bazi. So Bazi is one of the ancient Chinese life analysis systems similar to Western and Vedic astrology. It's the whole concept is based on your birth time on Earth, and we're all part of this vast universe. So the planetary energy in the universe influence who we are, our personalities. Um, upon based on the moment we were born, and the real call out here is that the birth time can be tricky because we have like daylight saving time, or in China they have the same time zone even though the real solar time is different time zone. So um, just a good call out here to pay attention to the hour of our birth time to um, ensure accuracy. But I was using today's moment when I'm feeling the uh, filming this video as an example. Let's say a person um, was born just now. So using the current calendar system, right? That's the year 2024 in February 16th at 3 p.m. Pacific time. Um, how that calendar translates into the traditional Chinese calendar looks like this. You have like eight different Chinese letters representing the same time message. And the reason this whole system is called Ba Zi means it literally means eight letters. So that represents this eight letter system to analyze your um, life prediction. It's actually pretty shocking to see how abstract, right? From eight letters, you can draw so many conclusions about different aspects of your life. I'm going to explain those in future videos, but today is just a foundation to kind of share some explanations about how this Chinese calendar came about. Um, so this top row here is called heavenly stems, and the bottom row is earthly branches. And let me explain to you how those two rows were developed and designed, because if you think about people living 3,000 years ago, they were trying to make sense of time and tracking time. They didn't have many advanced te technology at the time. So they were observing the stars and trying to identify patterns. At one moment, the star's pattern repeats itself again. So that's how the whole um, system was designed. So for the heavenly stems role, um, the whole concept is based on those um, planetary energies around Earth, right? The, our closest neighbors. So Mercury represents um, the water element in Chinese culture. Venus represents metal, that's us. And Mars, of course, that's very obvious, is the fire energy. Jupiter, because it's um, filled of gas and expansion, so it's the similar to the wood energy. And Saturn, which is the earth energy. So that's the five elements derived from the stars. And I drew a chart to um, give people a quick representation. So here are the 10 possible options for the heavenly stems. And it's broken down by those five um, elements I was talking about from the planetary energies, right? So of course, in Chinese culture, there's a yin and yang. And if you break each five element into yin and yang, you get 10 total options. And um, the white circle represents yang, and the black circle represents yin. So under the wood energy, you have yang wood, which is jia. Jia means like a, imagine like a big tree growing really tall, um, super strong, but not as flexible compared to the yin wood, which is more the little plants, the flowers, the ground covers. That's more flexible and resistant. Um, and then under the fire energy, the yang fire is called bing. Think of it like the, the sun in the sky or like a big, body of heat. Um, the ding fire, that's the yin fire energy. So it's like a little candle light or a little uh, light bulb. Under the earth energy, you have the yang earth, wu, and the yin earth, ji. So wu is like a big, hard mountain of dirt, or think of a big rocky mountain, versus ji is like a little farm earth that's full of nutrition and moisture for plants to grow in. And the metal, yang metal and yin metal, geng xin. So geng is like a big 
weapon made of metal, seeing is the softer jewelry that's more delicate. And the yang water, ren, yin water, gui. So ren is like your big ocean, big rivers. Gui is like a little clear stream flowing through the forest. So that's kind of a quick image of the 10 possible um, options of heavenly stems for that Chinese calendar system. So I'll repeat again, jia, yi, bing, ding, wu, ji, geng, xin, ren, gui. So that's the foundational 10 heavenly stems derived from the, the planetary energy and the yin and yang theory. And now you have the, the bottom row, that's the earthly branches. Um, those, there are a total of 12 of them as options. They were derived from the, the top 10 elements. So under each one, it's more complicated. Some of them is a combination of only one pure energy above. Some of them is a combination of two or three different top energies. But I won't go to that level of details today. I will share that later because that will be super helpful in analyzing the chart for a person. But for today's purpose, I'll give you a quick overview of the 12 um, earthly branches as well, because the combination of the top and bottom row come up with the Chinese, Chinese calendar system. Um, before I go into details, why is there 12 versus now 13 or 14, right, randomly? Because Jupiter is the biggest planet in the um, solar system. And it is the, the body mass of it has more influence and it takes Jupiter about 12 years to orbit around the sun. So there are 12 zodiac zones because um, each zone equals to one year and it still takes total of 12 years to orbit around the sun. So that's why there are 12 letters here. And they have their own yin and yang characteristics as well. So zi is yang, chou is yin, yin, mao. So hence is alternate, like so on and so forth. So it's alternating yin and yang with each other. And zi is like a yang water energy. Cho is an in earth energy. So it's like a cold ground dirt more in the winter time. Yin is like a yang wood energy. So it's like the first of spring with strong growth power, uh, wood power. Uh, Mao is the yin wood energy. Chen is uh, yang earth. Si is yang fire. So that's moving into the summertime, right? Wu is yin fire. So it's the, the heat is dying down, transitioning into the autumn time. Uh, Wei is yin earth. Shen is yang metal, that's the fall time, mirroring the metal energy. Uh, Yo is yin metal, and then you go into the winter time of Xu is yang earth, and Hai is um, yin water. So that gives you a quick overview of both the five elements and the yin and yang nature of the 10 heavenly stems and 12 earthly branches. And if you think, before I go into the details of what those each 12 um, letters mean in terms of time, right? How do they combine with each other to come up with that calendar? Because if you do 10 times 12, that should be 100, 120. And that's per cycle. And then after 120, it repeats itself again. But the tricky part is, because the bottom was derived from the top, so the yin the yang can only follow with a yang on top, and the yin can be only paired with a yin on top. So there's no such thing. So you can say jia zi is fine, but you have to skip this one because yang and yin don't pair with each other. So the next in sequence will be jia yin, and then jia mo is wrong because it's the, the yin and yang don't match. And then the third one, you move to jia chen because both are yang. Same thing with the uh, year starting with the yin energy. So what goes next, right? Ji chou will be the first sequence and then ji mao. There's no such thing as ji zi because the yin and yang are different. So because of that rule, there's a total of 60. So if you use this to track the time unit, right? In terms of years, every 60 years, this, this cycle repeats itself again, starting back with jia zi year. But when you apply this uh, 60 um, calendar for the month time unit, 
So every 16 months, so about five years, it repeats itself again for calculating month. And for days, same thing, every 60 days, about two months, this whole Chinese calendar repeats itself and you see Jiazi again. The same thing with um, hours, minutes, seconds. So that's how Chinese um, came up with the, the traditional Chinese calendar. And I also find it fascinating because I was researching, I'm like, why does it take 60 years? It's aligned with the Vedic astrology theory as well, because um, it's the least common multiple of all of those um, planets I listed here, how many years it takes them to orbit around the sun. So every 60 years, their relative, the, their relative position amongst each other restart again as the same positions in those zodiac houses as 60 years ago. So 60 is kind of the magical number for tracking time for accuracy. Um, so this 12 earthly branches, it represents different things. Like in terms of year, this is very commonly known. You see this in Chinese restaurants, right? So zi is the year of the mouth. So that's the 12 animal system because they, they share um, certain characteristics with each other. Chou is ox, yin is tiger, mao is rabbit, chen is dragon, si is snake, wu is horse, wei is sheep, shen is monkey, you is rooster, Xu is dog, and Hai is pig. So that's how you um, commonly know this in a, in a, when it's applied in the annual, the yearly time unit. See, if you go back to our prior example of what happens today, today is Jia Chen, Jia Chen year, right? So if you refer back to this chart, Chen is the year of the dragon. So you always hear people say, oh, 2024 is the year of the dragon. That's where it comes from. It's from those letters. And um, those systems also apply in a 12 hour period. So in the Asian um, Chinese calendar, we don't have the 24 hours per day concept. It's 12 hour period. So each letter means a two hour time frame in a day. So it starts with zi, which is 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. And then Cho is 1 a.m. to 3 a.m., so so on and so forth. But if using our example, I was saying at the time, suppose this person was born, it's Jia Shen hour. So if you look at this character Shen, um, that's 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. So that's how you kind of translate those Chinese characters into the, the current calendar concept. But before I move on, I think the most useful implication of this system is kind of the month concept, but it's not exactly aligned with the solar calendar months we have. It's, this is a very unique concept um, developed by Chinese called solar terms. So for me to explain the solar terms, I drew an ugly chart here of this is the, how the earth orbit around the sun, right? So at this point, this is the winter solstice when there's like the, it's the shorted, shortest number of hours for daytime. And then that's the summer solstice, which is the longest amount of daytime for, for Northern hemisphere people. And then this is the spring equinox and that's the autumn equinox, which each day has exactly 12 hours of daytime and 12 hours of nighttime, right? So because it was a heavily agriculture-based society, and so the weather, the, the, the climate was super important for the cycles of when you plant the, the grains and how you harvest it. So that's how the solar terms concept was developed. So every time on this orbit, it moves about 15 degrees. That's one solar terms. And then if it's 15 degrees of 360 degrees, that's a total of 24 solar terms. And then each month includes two solar terms. So that's how the Chinese month was developed. It's not exactly the same as a lunar calendar either because it's based on the sun influence. But 
it's not exactly a solar calendar either because um, it incorporates the concept of leap month into the calendar design. So you're like not missing number of days in a year. So I, I would say this solar terms concept is truly a cool combination of both solar and lunar calendar concept in there. Um, so I wrote a lot of like little words here. You can ignore this. Those are just the names of each of those solar terms on the dot here. So I'm saying like in the zi, when it applies in the concept of month, right? That has the greater snow and the winter solstice, the two solar terms that represents the monthly time of zi. And in the month of chou, when chou is applied in the month concept, um, it has two solar terms. The one name is called lesser cold right here. And the other name is called greater cold right here. So if you see the names here, it's actually fascinating. So it's moving from the colder months and then into the spring wood energy month. Like when the spring starts, it has rainwater, insects awakes, spring equinox. So it's telling you the, the, the naming of the solar terms in Chinese is really fascinating. It represents nature and the rhythm of the annual harvesting season. So that's kind of a quick view of the traditional Chinese calendar system, right? Just to summarize, you have 10 heavenly stems and 12 earthly branches. And the main takeaway is the earthly branches are quite complicated and it can be applied in an annual form, a solar terms form, which is similar to our month concept and the 12 hour period concept. Um, and then they have the different five elements and yin and yang tied to them. So I think that's a highlight of what I'm trying to explain here today. But going back to that example, right? Um, so look at the month. We're in February, so it's been yin yue. So if you go back to this yin, um, it's not exactly the start of February 1st, because this is mirroring the solar terms time, which the actual date vary a little bit each year from the solar calendar we currently use. So that's kind of an overview of the, the Bazi system and what this mean. But um, I'll give you a preview of the next video because if you have um, a position for all of those matters, right, you know what the op possible options for the top rows are, the 10 possible options. So if I call them by numbers of positions, so one, two, three, four, and then the bottom four are from the 12 option from um, earthly branches. So five, six, seven, eight, whatever those combinations are based on your birth time. This one, number three, that represents you, the person we're analyzing your life chart for. This position number six, because that represents the month and uh, one of the 12 zodiac signs, it has the most important influencing role amongst all of those eight letters. So the first step is analyzing. So this is a young metal, this is a young wood. So in this example, what's the relationship between those two energies? Is metal cutting wood? Um, so is it like a suppressing its energy versus some other one of the other five elements? It could be a different letter that will support the metal energy versus like restraining its energy, reducing it or is it suppressing it. That's kind of the beauty of Bazi is analyzing the interrelationship amongst those eight letters and how it influenced you as a person for position number three. But out of the eight letters, this is the most important influence. That's why I spent so much time on the um, solar terms concept because that determines the strength of the chi for each month and determine the, like, the strength and weakness of you as a person. And then the second tier, you look at kind of the letters close to you. And last but not least, those one, five, eight, those letters kind of 
a little further away from you. And each row and each letter position represents like different relationships, different aspects of your life. So that's kind of a, the gist of how you derive conclusions from the yin yang and the five elements, the relationship amongst each other and how they influence you as the main analyzing object. So that's kind of a quick overview of what is Ba Zi. And um, the next video, I will focus on the five element interrelationship. Is it supporting? Is it suppressing? Um, how the energy influence each other to draw meaningful conclusions. So thank you for watching.